In this video, I want to talk about data definition language commands, or DDL as it's also known. Data definition language commands in SQL are used to create and modify objects such as databases and tables. The main commands are create, alter, rename, truncate, and drop. The create command is used to create databases or database objects like tables. To create a database, you type create database followed by the database name. We're in MySQL Workbench and I'm going to create a database called testdb. You can see on the left pane that I currently only have one database called sys. This is a system generated database. To create a new database, I type create database followed by the database name and I'll call it test underscore db. Terminate with a semicolon and hit the lightning icon to run the query. And now if I refresh the left pane, you can see test underscore db has been created as a database. To create a table using the create command, you type create table followed by the table name. You then open parenthesis and type each column followed by the data type you would like the column to be. This is mandatory and then any constraints you would like the columns to have. This is optional. You do this for all of the columns and then you close parenthesis and terminate with a semicolon. If I expand the test DB database, you can see that at present there are no tables in the database. So I'm going to create a table called test table and give it two columns. One column I want to be a varchar data type and the other column I want to be a big int data type. I also want the second column to have a constraint that doesn't allow null values. So let's type create table followed by the table name and I'll call it test underscore table. Open parenthesis and type in the first column. I'll call it col1. We then type the data type of the first column and I want that to be a varchar data type which takes a 20 character limit. I don't want this data type to have any constraints, so I'll just place a comma and type in the second column. I'll call this column col2. I'd like this to be a big int data type, but I would like this to have a constraint, and the constraint will be not null. With spaces between. This constraint tells MySQL that this column should not have any null values. Close parenthesis, terminate with a semicolon, and click on run. Now if you look at the left pane, and once I refresh it, you can see that there is a test underscore table in the test underscore db database. And if I expand the columns, we can see, and we can see that the columns have the data types that we've specified, varchar2 and bigint. The alter command is used to change the structure of a database object such as a table. To add a column to a table, you type alter table followed by the table name. You then specify the add keyword and open parenthesis. You type in the column name followed by the data type and the constraints you would like to add. You do this for all columns that you would like to add, close parenthesis and terminate with a semicolon. Note that you only need the parenthesis if you are adding more than one column. So let's add a new column to our test table and give it the data type bigint again. First, let's look at our existing test table. And as you can see, we currently have two columns, col1 and col2. To add another column, you type alter table, followed by the table name, which is test underscore table. You then specify the add keyword and then you type the name of the column you would like to add. I'll call this col3 and give it the data type bigint and terminate with a semicolon. Let me just correct that. Note that we did not need to include parenthesis because we are only adding one column. If you are adding multiple columns, you should include a parenthesis and separate each column with a comma. Let's click on the lightning bolt icon 
and refresh the left pane. And as you can see, we now have Col3 added. And it is the data type BigInt. The alter command can also be used to drop columns from a table. To drop a column, type the table name after the alter table command. You then use the drop keyword, open parenthesis, and type in the names of the columns you would like to drop. You only need to include the parenthesis if you're dropping more than one column. So let's drop the new column called col3 that we've just added. First, let's look at our existing table. And as you can see, there's col3. To drop this column, you type alter table, followed by the table name, which is test underscore table. You then type the drop keyword, followed by the column name, which is col3. And again, we don't need to include parenthesis as we're only dropping one column. Click on the lightning bolt icon to run. And now once I refresh this pane, you can see col3 has gone. The alter command can also be used to change an existing column's data type. To do this, you type alter table followed by the table name. You then specify the modify keyword, open parenthesis, and type in the names of the columns followed by the new data types. You only need the parenthesis if you're changing more than one column. So let's change the data type of col2 from big int to small int. To do this, we type alter table followed by the table name, which is test underscore table, specify the modify keyword, and then the name of the column you'd like to change. In our instance, it's col2. You then type the new data type, which will be small int, terminate with a semicolon. And again, since we're just changing one column, I'm not including parentheses. Click on the lightning bolt icon to run, and now I'll refresh this left pane. And as you can see, the data type has changed to small int. The alter command can also be used to change an existing column's name. You can only rename one column at a time. To do this, you type alter table followed by the table name. You then type rename column followed by the old column name to the new column name. So in our test table, let's rename col1 to be called renamed underscore col1. To do this, you type alter table followed by the table name, then the rename column command followed by the old column name, which is col1, to the new column name, which is renamed underscore col1. Terminate with a semicolon, click on the lightning bolt icon, refresh the left pane, and as you can see, column one has changed from col1 to renamed underscore col1. The rename clause can be used as its own command to rename databases and tables. To rename a table, you type rename table followed by the old table name to the new table name. So let's rename our test underscore table to be renamed underscore test underscore table. To do that, we type rename table test underscore table, which is the old table name, to the new table name, which is renamed underscore test underscore table. Terminate with a semicolon and click on the lightning bolt icon to run. Refresh the left pane, and as you can see, the table has been renamed. Truncating a table deletes all records from a table, but it retains the table structure for future use. So it does not delete the entire table from the database, only the records inside it. To truncate a table, you type truncate table followed by the table name. So offline, I've added some records to our renamed underscore test underscore table. If we query the table by selecting star from renamed underscore test underscore table, 
You can see we have four records inside the table. So let's truncate renamed underscore test underscore table by typing truncate followed by the table name. Click on the lightning ball icon to run. Now let's query the table again. Now, as you can see, we return zero records as they've all been deleted. However, the table structure is still present, as you can see. And I can use the table again and insert more records into it for future use. The drop command deletes objects from a database, including databases and tables. To drop a table, you type drop table followed by the table name. To drop a database, you type drop database followed by the database name. So let's drop our renamed underscore test underscore table. But first, let's query it again. As you can see, we previously truncated it. So we return the table, but it has no records. Unlike the truncate command, the drop command will entirely delete this table. So let's type drop table followed by the table name. Click on the lightning bolt icon to execute. And now, as you can see, the table no longer exists. And if I try to query the table again, I get an error. Table renamed underscore test underscore table doesn't exist. Now let's delete our test underscore db database. To do that, we type drop database followed by the database name, which is test underscore db. Terminate with a semicolon and hit run. And as you can see, test underscore db has been dropped. So that was a short lecture on the main data definition language commands. I hope you found it useful.